on-the-scene video coverage of TCT 2012 is supported by Prodexa. I'm Peter Block here in Miami at TC2 2012 for On The Scene Video. We're going over the late-breaking clinical trials and I'm sitting here with Dr. Tony DiMario on my far left. Tony needs no introduction, the editor of Jack, as everybody knows. And on my immediate left, Dr. Deepak Bach, who's from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. So we're going to go over the late-breaking clinical trials that happened today. Today is day two at TCT, and the first one that we're going to talk about, or the first two actually, are going to be the RESPECT and PC trials. Interesting trials. Deepak, give me your thoughts about these, either these two, two trials together or separate the two. Sure, absolutely. Well, there's a total of three trials now that have closely looked at the question of cryptogenic stroke and PFO closure. Should you do it or not? And from a primary endpoint perspective, all three have been negative. So the ones presented here are RESPECT and PC, neither met their primary endpoint in terms of a statistically significant reduction in recurrent strokes. So there were some promising signals in the RESPECT trial, but I think ultimately we have to respect the data and concede that the primary endpoint wasn't met. Tony, what do you think? Well, it's interesting, Peter. Uh, the trials, I think, are negative, uh, basically negative, perhaps some subgroup positivity. But to me, the more interesting question is, what do they reflect on the significance of a PFO? That's been debated since you and I were interns, uh, which was right. a while back. And, and, and the question is, is it that the PFO really isn't significant and, and that the likelihood of a thrombus choosing to go through that small hole rather than through the tricuspid orifice is infinitesimally small? Or is there some problem with the device itself that generates a thrombus? But, um, you know, I've, I've always been of the school that PFOs are just too common that uh, you would expect many more events if the PFO was, was really the cause of cryptogenic strokes. Well, you know, I'm going to hit it for a little bit with you guys because I think there's some interesting information here. A statistician once told me that there's no data set that doesn't have some information in it. So let's drill down a little bit. There is interesting information that I think we glean from these studies, particularly respect, about the fact that some subsets seem to have a signal. I mean, that's really hedging the bet, right? But large PFO, atrial septal aneurysm patients, clearly fall on the other side of the line, and it seems to be the right thing to close those. And if somebody had a recurrent cryptogenic stroke, if you had a recurrent stroke, Tony, and a PFO and a large atrial septal aneurysm, that your PFO was large, would you want me to close it or not? Well, if, if I had a small ASD <laughs> and a cryptogenic <laughs> stroke, yeah, I think I'd want to close. Yeah. But I'm not sure at this point in time I'd necessarily want to close with a device. Well, one of the issues, and Deepak, you ought to chime in on this, one of the issues is going to be, will this device go before panel now, or will these data support it to go before panel? If you were sitting on the panel, what would you say? You know, I think that's a tough question because I share with you th that uh, instinct and gut feeling that there are some patients, if we could carefully identify them, that would benefit from this in real life. The problem though is, and I think Tony hit the nail on the head, there are a lot of PFOs out there, and, and is it really causality when a patient's had a stroke? I think in the majority of them, no. And the real challenge in the field is to identify which patient might benefit from this. And, and I think uh, respect does help us in that regard. And what I'm going to say is not going to be something interventionists will be thrilled to hear, but I think we actually need another trial to really <laughs> nail it down. Yeah. And the event rate in this trial was pretty low, so the number of yeah. events over time was lower, perhaps, than many had anticipated. So, The other side of this, of course, is now we have new anticoagulants, and that sort of runs into the mix, and going forward, how does this play into closure with a device and so forth, but nevertheless, you know, the bottom line is, should we as interventionalists have a device to close the PFO? Because this is a different device than an ASD device. And candidly, I think a better one for a PFO than an ASD device, simply by the way it's put together. Should we have a device, Tony? I, I think we should, Peter, and I'll, I'll tell you why. As someone who does some echocardiograms from time to time, I have seen thrombi that got trapped in PFOs, and there it's incontrovertible 
that in that patient, that PFO is responsible for, for a paradoxical embolism. So I, I, I guess I do agree that clearly there are some patients who would benefit by a device like that. But my own opinion is based on the trials and based upon the whole concept of a PFO that's probably a very small number. Okay, so there you have it, and we'll be right back.